Get the frick out of his bed. Yeah, I, I gotta go to sleep. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Therapy. My goal for this episode, like in the Minecraft world, is to get diamonds. Because normally I like don't um, have a goal, and then I end up like running around in a circle, like I am, like I'm doing right now. And then you guys have a very boring episode to watch. So, gonna gonna try and find diamonds today, guys. Anyway, the topic for today, as you can probably tell, because I'm going to put in the title, probably, is talking about self-love and self-hate. A very broad topic that encompasses a lot of things. I'm not going to like, you know, you're not going to learn how to like love yourself in this episode, okay? This is not, that's a very long journey. Maybe like in a few years you'll be able to do that, but... Yeah, that's not happening in this single episode. But I feel like the the, the internal struggle within myself um, between self-love and self-hate has been one of the defining um, mental struggles of my life. Like the, the thing that's like been the key to like me living the life I want or not living the life I want, which is like very, like, that's a big deal, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, I feel like it's within my best interest to understand um, the concepts of self-love and self-hate. So let's just dive into it and talk about it. So I feel like for most of my life, I have trapped myself, um, in a, in a, in a, I don't know, what's a good noun? In a bear trap of self-hate. That's not a good, like, you know, whatever. Plowing ahead. Which, <laughs> for most of my life, I hated myself. I'm trying to, like, find coal because I realize I don't have a coal and I can't go mining without coal because then I can't see where I'm going in the cave. But... Yeah, let's go chop down some trees, and then let's get some coal, and then let's get that diamond. But yes, for most of my life, I've, I feel like I have hated myself. Um, I feel like what it kind of boils down to is that I'm, I've thought, or not thought, I am an Asian guy who wears glasses, and that's why I hated myself. That's really what it boils down to. It's kind of an oversimplification, but also like kind of what it boils down to. Um, and what does that what does that even mean? I think like for myself, I don't know. There are like expectations in like society about like who who is like cool and who's not cool right and i i feel like from the media i've consumed growing up um asian males just weren't like you know cool people we're always like the sidekick or like kind of like the joke character and like it's not like we don't have great prospects out there you know what i mean like I don't know, it's hard for me to describe, and I'm not trying to, like, blame, like, you know, society for, like, uh, uh, society, you made me feel bad, and now I hate myself. I guess I am kind of doing that a little bit, but, like, I'm not, like, you know, trying to, like, I don't know, pin it all on, like, oh, there weren't enough, like, Asian characters in Drake and Josh, so now I hate myself. That's not what I'm trying to say. I guess... It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know where exactly this this enormous foundation of self-hate within myself sprang from. But it's it's inside me. And I guess, yeah, let's try and explore where that comes from. I think one reason why self-hate stuck in my life for so long was because it just felt like more authentic to hate myself or like more like quote unquote real to hate myself like I don't know it just felt it's always felt like a little like corny to be like oh I love myself you know what I mean like 
it almost feels like a little arrogant to be like, oh, I, I love myself. I think I'm so good that like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm narcissist or whatever. That guy who like just stares at his reflection in the lake and like, oh, I'm like good. And like, I'm deserving of self-love. Like that feeling is always like kind of just been weird to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's never been like natural for me to love myself, which I don't think that's like a nat, I don't know. I or I don't think that's like a natural human emotion, but I, don't, I also don't think it's like quote unquote natural to love yourself either. I think both of those feelings are probably like man-made constructions based on like the environment you grow up in and like shit like that. And I think it just so happened that the environment I grew up in like leaned me towards thinking like self-love was like weird slash not like worth um not important or like not worth investing that much energy into making sure i love myself um i think i think for me self-love wasn't really emphasized growing up like in my family and i'm not trying to like blame my family for that i just think like the situation i grew up in um, there were much more quote unquote important things to do than like love yourself. You know what I mean? Like to me, loving yourself almost feels like something that's reserved for like upper middle class white people in like Park Slope who like go to private school and like have time to like go to theater productions on the weekend and like learn how to like you know, love themselves and, like, read... Their parents read The New Yorker and, like, have, like, conversations at night with their kids, like, oh, you know, Ben, if you want to smoke weed and discover yourself, that's your prerogative. We love you no matter what, blah, 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 blah. That was not really my experience <laughs> growing up. And I think, I think my experience growing up was much more, like, results-focused. Um, and what do I mean by that? I think, um, what do I mean by that? To explain what I mean by that, I'm going to tell you about the time I went to the village where my dad grew up after my freshman year of college. So after my freshman year of college, I went back to China with my dad. Um, I'm sure Trump was really happy about that. Haha, <laughs> political joke. I went back to China with my dad, and I went to the village where he grew up, and, like, um, you know, it was, like, it was straight up a village, dog. Like, there were these, like, uh, there weren't huts, but, like, there were these concrete, like, structures that, like, uh, where there was, like, one light bulb inside the structure, and, like, it was, like... It was a village, you know, it's like you had to like take this dirt road like into the village and like they didn't have like Wi-Fi and it was like crazy for me to see because I was thinking like, whoa, like if my grandpa hadn't decided randomly like whatever, 50 years ago to move his entire family to America, which is a much braver thing than I has, than I have ever done in my life. If he hadn't decided to do that, I would be in this fucking village right now. Which, there's nothing wrong with, like, going, growing up in a village, you know, I'm not trying to, like, you know, you know what I mean, I'm not trying to pass judgment on, on people who grew up in a village, I've, you know, my, my dad grew up in a village, but, like, you know, that's, a, like, there's a very thin line be between, like, me growing up in that village and, like, me have, living in America and, like, going to Stanford and, like, having a computer science degree and, like, uh, wah, 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 like, I don't make, like, you know, I only make $100,000 a year and not $150,000 a year, you know what I mean, like, so that was a very, I don't know, that was an interesting experience for me, and I think, like, upon, I don't know, that just kind of, I feel like I understand where my parents are coming from a lot more, like, now as an adult, because, like, they're just people, too, and, like, I get why, like, you know, when I was a kid, I used to, like, really not like my parents for a lot of things, 
one of them, a big one was like for them for like pushing me a lot in like school and like, um, in school, <laughs> in school, that's really the one thing they pushed me in. But like, I really like kind of resented them for that because I was like, well, all these, like all my, you know, all these cool white people get to like go to like fun summer camp where they like play basketball and like sing camp songs. And I have to go to like fucking um sat prep so like what's up with that but as an adult now it's like i get it there's a they were worried that we were going back to that village they didn't want us to go back to that village so they were very results focused and i think because they were very results focused on my education there wasn't much time left over for self-love and like telling me hey you know you could follow your dreams and like just be whoever you want because you know, if you are who, if you do whatever you want, who knows? We might be going back to that village. So, um, that's that. Yes, just want to make clear: not roasting my parents. I love my parents a lot. They're awesome. Thanks, mom and dad, if you're watching this. Even though <laughs> I know you're not. Okay, that's enough of that. Um. So yes, self love wasn't really the priority for me growing up. I would say the priority was, um just grinding and making sure I was, like, good at, like, school. Um, and I would also say, like, in the educational, I would say in the educational institutions I, you know, spent a lot of time in, self-love was also not really emphasized, which, I don't know, I, it's not really the job of an educational institution, I guess, is to, like, teach you how to love yourself but i would also say like those places could have done a better job in like not completely fucking up my mental health um yeah i would say like in in the in the high school and college i went to they were like very you know a theme of my channel is basically like high achieving high achiever burnout i feel like is a big theme of my channel and how like pushing your forcing like literal children who are 14 to 18 years old and then like very young very very young adults who are 18 to 22 years old forcing them to like just like grind and like be the best and like just like fucking sacrifice everything to like achieve some like arbitrary goal uh i feel like a theme of my channel is just like that's not good because it can have, like, a short-term benefit of, like, yeah, sure, if you study really hard for the SAT, um, it can, you will probably get a good score on the SAT, but, like, also, like, there's an opportunity cost in terms of, like, your personal well-being that is very, very costly and can last for, like, many years after, um, Okay, Siri. Siri, why are you sp spying on me? Siri's been spying on me a lot, and I don't like it. But yeah, I would say at my high school and college, they weren't really places that built you up as a person, um, if, you, if you know what I'm saying. Like, they didn't really, like, help you become a full human being. It was just kind of like, hey, we're going to drill you on, like, these random skills that we have decided are important for you to learn and you are going to become the fucking best at these skills and that's all we care about and want and learn these fucking skills and then get the fuck out of here um was my experience at high school and college and really kind of middle school too but i mean what am i going to do blame middle school for my 25 year old problems and that kind of leads me to the next thing, which is that um, self hate can really have a it can really have a hold on you. You know what I mean? Like it really grabs you and then doesn't let go. And one of the ways that it can do one of the ways it can do that is through like just making you like hold on to like oh I'm at bedrock, bro. Oh no, this isn't bedrock. What the fuck is this? Minecraft. Changing the game on me. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes. Self-hate can really do a number on you because it, you can just be focused 
on that hatred for yourself. And then like you don't really want to improve because you're just so busy like hating yourself and you're like, well, I suck anyway, so why would I want to improve? And I'll just wallow here in this pain forever. Which isn't good. Which isn't good. And um, I feel like that's why like hope is like really important. Um, just in general in life. Because like if you lose hope, hope, hope can like help you get out of a bad situation. You know what I mean? Even if you have nothing, if you believe you can get out of a bad situation and, and have hope you can drag yourself out or like at least makes like some improvement. But if you don't have any hope, um, even if you're in a good situation, it'll probably go bad eventually because you have no hope and like, you're like, well, and then, you know, well, life sucks. And then it, it becomes like this downward spiral. Um, yeah. I feel like another thing, I don't know. You know, it's like, with self-hate, I feel like there are a lot of possible explanations for where it comes from. You know what I mean? Like, because I don't think I was born hating myself. You know what I mean? Um, I don't, you know, I don't think anyone's born hating themselves or loving themselves. Uh, it's kind of like I said, like, oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, I kind of don't want to kill this because I know if I kill him more zombies are going to spawn. Also, that wasn't... This isn't the rev the giant cavern I saw. Also, fucking die! Okay, so I'm going to go back up because I want to get into the cavern. I'm going to block this off. What was I saying? I also need to smelt... Make another pickaxe. Oh, and I left all the iron back at the furnace. Oh, silly me. Yes, I don't think anyone's born... Look at all this iron I just left here. Let me pick it up. I don't think anyone's born hating themselves or loving themselves, you know? Kids, babies are stupid. They don't know how to do that shit. So, somewhere along the way, I picked up this trait of self-hatred, and it stuck with me throughout my life. Also, I feel like I didn't really explain why, like, um, focusing on school made me hate myself, because I don't know, I don't know if that's, like, a direct connection there but basically why did it make me hate myself probably because i didn't like doing that shit you know like 10 year olds don't like fucking going to like sat prep not you know i didn't go to sat prep when i was 10 but like you know what i mean um you know and i was like why the fuck am i doing this this fucking sucks um must be something wrong with me to like have earned this like shitty situation for myself or maybe it's just like you know it sucks so much that like it, it beat me down like mentally like I was like damn this sucks um this sucks yes yeah it's, yeah it's probably something like that like oh this sucks I hate I hate this shit I hate myself because uh, I'm the one in this shit and I must have somehow done something to deserve this I don't know Probably just being in, like, shitty situations that you don't like probably leads to more self-hate than self-love. I don't know what the direct, like, correlation there is, but I don't imagine that it's good for, like, you know... People who find themselves in situations they enjoy probably love themselves more than people who are in situations they hate. I don't know, you know? <laughs> that's probably true. So that's probably why, you know doing all that shit um, made me not have too much self-love. And once again, I'm not blaming anyone, not blaming my parents. I'm very appreciative that, like, in some ways, you know what I mean? Like, I have to appreciate it because, like, if I didn't do, you know, fucking study in school so much, I wouldn't have gone, you know, to Stanford. I wouldn't have, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't have such so many good opportunities for myself and, like, it's very easy for me to, like, be on the other side and be like, uh, I wish, like, I didn't have to, like, go to, like, SAT prep and, like, could have still gone to Stanford. But, like, also, you know, I don't know. It's nice, you know. I, it's nice to have that 
in the back pocket and like I appreciate my parents for like wanting a better life for me and like I know like at the end of the day I know they had like good intentions you know what I mean like they weren't like Cinderella's stepmom to me and like sending me to SAT prep just because like they hated me you know what I mean like I think they truly wanted the best for me and like that's why I can like you know kind of not I don't have like resentment towards them for that or at least too much resentment <laughs> um but yes um what was I gonna say yeah, I don't know. At, at the end of the day, though, like, all this self-hatred stuff, I, I would say, like, I was really deep in that well of self-hatred, so much so that, like, I didn't even realize, like, I was hating myself. I just kind of, like, thought, like, oh, that's, like, my personality that, like, I feel, like, depressed all the time and, like, don't like myself. I felt that way about, up until about, like, two years ago, and... I don't know. I, I feel like now looking back on it, it's like very, I you know, I spent the whole, whatever, the last 15 minutes talking about all the reasons why this health hate could have sprung up within me. Because like I said, I don't think any kid's born hating themselves. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, like uh, the buck kind of stops with me. You know what I mean? Like at, at some point as I get older, and I, and I get further and further away from my childhood and, like, high school, it, it becomes, like, weirder, weirder, maybe not weirder, but, like, you know, it becomes, like, what am I doing here? Like, am I really blaming high school and college for, like, my life right now? Because, like, I have to, like, take responsibility at some point and, like, realize I'm not, like, blameless in, like, my own situation in life and, like, I'm not just, like, a person that like the world acts on I can like have I have a say in like how my life goes you know what I mean and I'd be lying if I said that like I didn't want to blame someone for like the self-hate in me or like blame you know high school or college for like the self-hate in me it's nice you know to have someone or something to blame you know what i mean because then it's like well this isn't my fault this is like this thing's fault and like and like it eases the conscience a little bit you know what i mean to like not um not be fully responsible for like the shitty life <laughs> that i found myself in but like i said at some point i have to accept responsibility and realize, you know, as Taylor Swift said, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Um, at some point, you got to realize, yes, yes, step up and live your life. Um, and, and I feel like one way my friend, well, that was weird the way I said that. I was, I had, I was like having, I was trying to process multiple thoughts in my brain at once. And then like, I kind of spat that out weird. Okay, what the hell? Why can I not get into this ginormous cavern? Um, anyway, I think one way my friend really helped me... Um, shout out my friend for helping me with this shit. Uh, thanks. You really helped change my life. So shout out anonymous friend. Um, you should actually follow her channel. It's linked in my YouTube page on the home screen. But yes, this friend helped me a lot with um, kind of taking responsibility for my own life and like my own self-hate. And basically uh, what they said to me was, uh, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I may have said this on the channel before. Sorry if I already said this on the channel. I say a lot of fucking things on this channel across many years, so I don't remember everything I've said. But yes, she said... Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Which basically means like, uh, yes, if you continue hating yourself and thinking you deserve to have a shitty life, that's probably, you know, you're, you'll probably end up living a shitty life and like not liking yourself. And then you will be right. You Your self-hatred will be vindicated and you'll be right and like congrats. You are right that like you suck and like you should hate yourself. Um which is a shitty prize. Like, why do you want that prize for yourself? The alternative is that you 
figure out like a way to break out of this cycle, figure out a way to love yourself, decide you want a better life for yourself, and like you're happy actually instead. And doesn't that seem like a much better prize than like being right about having a, a being right about you suck and you are shit? And that was a really good way for me. That was a really good way she framed it for me that helped me figure some shit out. Figure some shit out. <laughs> so thank you once again, friend, for that. Oh my god, why can I not get in that ginormous cavern? There's Now I'm in this mini cavern? I feel like this is the right direction to be digging. You know, why don't I just fucking have a water bucket? I know this is irresponsible mining, but you guys just watched me dig a tunnel for like the last fucking 15 minutes. That's not very fun, so let's do that. Another way my friend helped me was uh, she got me, she, she uh, showed me this book, Thinking Anew, it's, which is not even really a book. It's like 20 pages of like forward and then like just a blank journal, basically. But like she got me um, using the book, which is basically just writing in the journal. But there, there are like some prompts in the journal slash book and like one of the things they make you do in the um in the journal is uh conclude every journal entry with the words i love you insert your own name here so i wrote my own name but i'm not gonna say it because I'm trying to stay anonymous here i would write that at the end of every journal entry i love you myself and it would trigger, like, some weird, like, recoil inside me. I'd be like, whoa, this is weird. Why Why am I loving myself? This is, like, unnatural. Uh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, this, this feels, like, really cheesy and lame and, like, you know, like, unmasculine to, like, love myself and, like, and say out loud I love myself. Um, but then that really, that kind of got me thinking, like, why, why is it, like, unmasculine or, like, weird for me to, like, physically write down or say to myself, I love myself, you know what I mean? Because, like, I don't think that's, like, you know, that's, like, wait, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't ever say to one of my guy friends, like, oh, that's weird that, like, you love yourself, you know what I mean? Um, did I lose all the iron somewhere? What the fuck? Um... You know what I mean? So, yes. Um, that was kind of like... Yeah, that got me thinking. And then just through the act of literally writing I love myself, um, that was a big deal in like helping myself get to a point of accepting that self-love isn't like this weird thing that I have to like recoil from. Um... And yes, I don't know. I feel like just, uh, I don't know exactly, you know, my self-love journey, I don't even know how to like describe it. You know, it's not like one day I woke up and everything was fixed. And it's not like, you know, it's not like a movie where like I had like three scenes and like, you know, two side characters and like it very neatly like helped me reach the conclusion that, like, I should love myself. You know what I mean? It's not, like, it wasn't that easy. It's still not that easy. Uh, it's probably never going to be that easy. But I feel like I just kind of, one thing I kind of realized is just that, like, if I hate myself, I'm going to stay stuck here and basically just become someone I don't want to be because I don't want to hate myself. And if I love myself, am I going to die? Am I gonna, Was this stupid? Was this the stupidest thing I could have done, which is just rappel down here with water, with no plan into this ginormous cavern, monsters all around, really stupid, really stupid. Oh my God. Can we dig into a wall before we fucking get murdered? Yes. Oh my God. Thank you. What was I saying? Yes. If I hate myself... I'll end up being someone I don't want to be and stuck 
in a fortress of self-hatred of my own making, but if I love myself, I can actually grow. And you know what? I know part of me actually kind of feels good wallowing in my self-hatred paradoxically, paradoxically, because like self-hatred is all I've ever known. And like, it's weird for me to love myself because it's not something I'm used to. And if I love myself, you know, maybe I'll lose like, you know, the, the tortured artist part of me and like become like this corny, cheesy guy who just sees life in like rainbows. But you know what? That's better than like being depressed all the time. And like, you know, if I love myself, I can grow as a person. So I don't know. That was kind of, I don't know, the, the ultimate conclusion I came to. Maybe not the ultimate conclusion, but like a conclusion I came to to support myself in the journey of self-love. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up, I kind of want to talk about what self-love means to me because I've talked a lot about self-love, but like, you know, it's one thing to be like, oh, love yourself. It's another thing to be like, well, you know, what does that actually mean? You know, should I fucking bake a cake for myself every day? You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> What's, what, what do we mean here? So I feel like one thing that's important for me, and you know, this is probably different for everyone, so like, don't use, hey, creeper guy, please don't kill me. Okay, how do I tackle this cave? Because there's probably people, monsters in every corner. Um, let's set up a base of operations here. While I talk about what self-love means to me, which, once again, is different for everyone. Uh, one thing that self-love means to me is not bullying myself and not being ashamed of who I am. And basically, I'm allowed to enjoy life, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have to, like, feel, like, guilty for being myself or, like, liking the things I like um, under any circumstances, unless it's, like, fucking illegal, or, like, you know, or, like, fucking up, like, someone else's life, but, you know what I mean, like, for one example, like, I like to listen to a lot of girly music, you know, quote, unquote, music for when the homies ain't around, and, you know, what does that even mean, that's, that's probably just society's, you know, fucking sexist norms in society about like what is music for men and what's music for women and toxic masculinity and men aren't allowed to have feelings that's a whole nother discussion in terms of you know what's girly music but i listen to a lot of girly music quote unquote and i feel like you know to a lot of people that's weird you know what i mean i went to a gracie abrams concert um, there are not a lot of guys there. I feel like I got a lot of weird looks from dads who are with their daughters at the concert. Like, why is this, why is this guy here? Fuck this, you know. Dads, chill the fuck out. I'm just here to listen to some music, okay? But, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I feel like, um, that's one example of, like, a thing that's quote-unquote weird that I, that I like and, like, um is part of who I am. But part of what self-love means to me isn't like, you know, there's enough pressure from the outside world that thinks like listening to girly music or whatever, whatever, whatever fucking weird things do I do. I don't know. I can't come up, come up with it on the top of my head, but you know what I mean? Everyone's got weird shit they like. There's enough societal pressure telling me that like I'm not allowed to like like the weird shit that I like. I don't need to like extra bully myself and, like, shame myself for, like, who I am and, like, what I like because, like, it's not illegal to listen to girly music. Um, yeah, I feel like... Uh, what am I just going to say? Yeah, I feel like my friend also really helped me with that because... Um, yeah, shout out my friend. <laughs> really helping me. But, like, you know, like, when I would tell her I listened to these, I was like, oh, I really like Taylor Swift's new album. She didn't, like, shame me for that and be like, oh, 
that's weird. Why are you listening to Taylor Swift's album? But actually now Taylor Swift is like, now she's like very popular and like it's not weird anymore for guys to like her. But I remember when I was a fan of 1989 and everyone was like, uh, Taylor Swift, that's for girls, that's for girls. Now everyone's a Swifty, huh? Everyone's come around. I see how it is. I'm glad Taylor finally, you know, con I'm glad Taylor's having so much success. But just saying, everyone thought it was like, you know, kind of weird for guys to be Swifties in like 2015. Now everyone's a Swifty. But yes, <laughs> uh, shout out my friend for not making me feel judged or like weird when I like, you know, was like, I love Taylor Swift's new album. And she's like, yeah, that's a good album. And I feel like when I saw her accepting me for who I am, I was like, you know what? I can accept me for who I am. So... Yeah, I feel like an important, oh god, this fucking creeper, and I'm also out of coal, and I want to get diamonds so everyone, you know, has a fun time watching this episode, but we're in a tough spot here. Okay, let me fucking assassinate these guys from their knees. Hey, idiots, come over here so I can kill you. God damn it. Um, what was I saying? Yes. Um, kind of in the same vein of not bullying myself and not, like, shaming myself for, like, being who I am. It's just, like, I'm entitled to enjoy life, you know what I mean? Maybe entitled is too strong of a word, but, like, yeah, life. It's good. Um, oh, God, please, 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 fuck. God fucking, fuck, <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. God, why are you in my bed? Let's go back down. I don't even know where that cave was, but let's try to find it. Um, yes. I'm entitled to enjoy life because why would I not be? You know what I mean? Like, for some reason, I feel like, and I feel like this is kind of an Asian thing. Like, Asian people think, like, having fun in life is, like, the worst thing you can do. It's like, whoa, you're having fun? Slow down there. You know what I mean? Like, go go fucking study for the SAT or, you know, go fucking chill out. Asian people think, like, having fun will, like, lead to, like, your ruin in life. But honestly, it's not a crime to have fun. Having fun is fun. And, you know, it's my, again, maybe too strong of a word to use the word right as a person, but, like, it's my, I deserve to, like, you know, go to concerts and, like, talk to people and, like, you know, fucking, uh, I don't know, go for bike rides and, like, frolic in, like, a field. Like, these are all things that, like, I are equally, you know, are equally open to me as to anyone else. And, like, it's not, like, only, you know, hot, beautiful people get to enjoy life. I can enjoy life, too. So, yeah, that's good for me to realize. That's a good for me to realize. Oh my god. Look at, look at all these fools chasing me. I blew up. I don't know where that cave was, even though it's got to be somewhere here, right? It wasn't that far away. Uh, let's go back to this shitty house that I built and rest restock and regroup. Self-love. It's important, guys. It's crazy. Um, sh Once again, shout out my friend. I feel like having, you know, a friend and people to lean on is key. And I'm very grateful that somehow I had these people to lean on. You know, family, friends, very cool. Okay, now I'm starving. Oh, was this? Nope. All right, I got to get food before I can continue my search for where I fucking died. <laughs> yes, another way... Um, I try to practice self-love is not apologizing for being myself. Um, like, I went to this, like, writing camp, Kenyan Young Writers Workshop, but it's basically, like, a summer camp for writing nerds. But, like, I went to this place, and I remember, like, our instructor for that was, like, or there was this one kid who, like, always before she read her stuff, she'd be like, oh, you know, this isn't, like, 
my best work, but like here it is, and it's like maybe not that good. And then our instructor was like, no, never apologize for like your writing and like who you are and like you wrote it and like of course like we nothing anyone ever writes is like the best thing ever you know what i mean you don't need to like explicitly say that before like everything you do and like don't apologize for like yourself and like who you are and like i feel like that really stuck with me and like i feel like that's like applicable to just all of life you know what i mean like not just like you know before you read something you wrote or like present something you created but just like in life you know what i mean it's not necessary to apologize for who you are once again unless you're doing some like fucking illegal sh shit that like fucks up other people's lives don't do that but like you know what i mean like if you're just if you're a fucking one direction fan um no need to apologize for that because you know it's your prerogative to enjoy one direction um where was that fucking cave you guys are watching this right now probably and being like you idiot! It's right there! But, I don't know where it is, so... Oh, is this it? Here we go. Alright, we're back. Oh, we are, we are so fucking back. We are back. Um, yes. Basically, don't apologize for yourself. Don't apologize for existing. One thing that really I like and helps me with that is the line from In the Blood... By John Mayer, which goes something like, Will I dim the lights inside me just to satisfy someone? And when you put it that way, it's like, whoa. Like, you know what I mean? Like, will are you really gonna, like, you know, make yourself lesser just to, like, make someone else happy? Someone else is, like, often, you know, harsh words here, but someone else is often an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, fuck. I fucking watered myself down there, so there's not really a way for me to easily get down unless I water myself down again. So let's get a bucket and do that. But, yes, you know what I mean? It's not necessary to um, apologize for your existence. I've said that like three times already. Let's move on. <laughs> um, yes, I, I feel like to summarize, like, self-hatred for me basically just, like, was this feeling that, like, I'm uncool, I, oh, and I'm dead. Impaled on a stalagmite, that's very savage. Well, at least now I know I need to get some water and a bucket. Is there a bucket here? A lot of bread. No bucket. Um, yes, you know, self-hate was like, you know, you suck, don't follow your dreams because your dreams are you know way beyond what a sucky person like you could ever accomplish and like just fucking major in cs and be a software engineer and you know that's actually kind of a good life you know in and of itself even though it's not exactly you know the perfect life for yourself but it's good enough and just like stick with good enough you know good enough is all you can really hope for but you know once again, do I want to do I want to be right or do I want to be happy and like actually accomplish everything I want to in life? And maybe, you know, I'm not saying if you love yourself, you're going to fucking become Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio and like all your dreams are going to come true, you know. Um you know, life is hard still, but you know, don't it's not like it's not like punishingly hard you know what i mean life is hard in the way that's like just that's life you know what i mean like life is a roller coaster sometimes when life is going good for me i'm like whoa shit's about to get bad isn't it <laughs> but you know what i mean that's not like a bad thing that's just that's just life and the journey of life and like i think the journey of life is something to be enjoyed and and um enjoyed and and it's not something you have to fight with you know what i mean and self-love to me in its simplest form is just believing that i deserve to have a good life whatever that means for me whatever that means for you you deserve to have a good life person watching this video and yeah 
That's, that's what it boils down to at the end of the day. And, you know, self-love is a journey. You know, I don't think, like, I've completely figured out self-love and, like, I'm, like, this new person who's, like, completely, you know, figured life out. Let me retell the story. Cut that. Cut that out. Editing me. Um, I think it's funny when celebrities are like, oh, I was in a really dark place three years ago. I, you know, I was really struggling, but I'm in a much better place now. You know, I'm, I'm learning to love myself. And then three years later, they say the exact same thing. They're like, oh, three years ago, I was in a really dark place. But, you know, now, now I'm really, you know, I found some hobbies. I'm really, you know, you know, spending my time in ways that fulfill me and nourish me. And it's like, oh, so what's going on here? You know what I mean? Like, you're just always, it was always sucky three years ago, but the present is always good. But in a way, that's kind of, that kind of is how it is. You know what I mean? Like, it's never... It's never a straight line. It's never, I don't think there's ever a destination to reach. Something I learned about recently is this something called the arrival fallacy, which is basically like this fallacy that like we believe that like once we achieve our goals or like get somewhere or like, you know, just, just get to wherever we have been trying to go that like we'll finally be happy and like everything will be okay. But like, that's not necessarily true, you know what I mean? Like, life always has its challenges to present, and, like, there's new things, and, like, I think, like, um, it's not, like, necessarily reaching a place of, like, complete satisfaction, and, like, oh, I finally achieved all my goals, so I can finally rest and, like, be satisfied with myself, but, like, just, like, an acceptance of yourself and like the journey and the process and realizing that like you know just because it's a journey with ups and downs doesn't mean it's like it doesn't mean it's like bad you know what i mean it's just like life you know what i mean like there's no book on like the good parts are correct and the bad parts are wrong you know what i mean like there's no like there's no objective way to like view life and like you know what it is and I feel like that is kind of a key thing I'm trying to understand more and it was like important for myself to like be able to live my life and the journey of life without like being constantly stressed about like needing to get to wherever I'm going I got, a little, I got a little too deep for a silly game about Minecraft where I died twice and didn't even get the diamonds I was supposed to get. And now I have an empty inventory except for 13 bread. Shout out Taylor Swift. But um, yeah, maybe that's a metaphor for life. Anyway, sun setting. Wow, beautiful way to end the episode. So much meaning. Look at the, look at the tiny village that I, you know, nourished and single-handedly built and definitely didn't just stumble upon. Um, I'm probably going to try and recover my stuff after I stop recording this episode, but it's probably all disappeared by now. But you know what? That's fine. That's life. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. It really means a lot. Like, sometimes I wonder, like, sometimes I wonder, like, if I, like, if I'm actually happy now or, like, I, I just got, like, randomly blessed by the YouTube algorithm. And, like, of course, like, I would be happy if, like, you know, the algorithm randomly like made me successful and like do i really deserve this but like i don't know but <laughs> that's a discussion for another time um i love you guys a lot i hope you guys are doing well just you know yeah take care of yourselves all right thanks for watching catch you guys next time stay safe stay sane peace all right, guys, I did not recover my objects, but look, there's a fucking, there's diamonds here. So we did it. We did it. There's in this giant cavern, there's diamonds and I'm about to die. So thanks for watching. Ah.